today we had the opportunity to really connect with a subject matter expert on mental health, Leticia Baca of the Urban Catalyst Psychotherapy Group, where she shared with us what are the things that we're experiencing during this COVID-19 pandemic where we're forced to shelter in place and what are the things we can do to cope and what are the resources we can access to help us manage our mental health so that we are healthier and mindful of the things that are affecting us. So once again, on Coming Out Stronger, please take a listen and reach out to the resources out there to help you, your family, and those around you stay strong and stay well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I know this is a very uncertain time and I'm happy to discuss how we can support one another, but most importantly, take care of our mental health needs as we're going through this challenge. I think in general, a lot of people have been facing some uncertainty, um, living in the Bay Area, housing issues, job crises, um, the concerns with uh, COVID only amplified some of these uncertainties. So mm -hmm. I'm more mindful of the people who've already been experiencing some stress and understanding the human condition will always have some uncertainty, sure. but um, it's a global level and we're seeing it, you know, just walking outside, going to grocery stores, even in your own household now, mm -hmm. because everyone's in the house. Right. So um, in general, I think people are doing the best that they can. Um, but I also know that a lot of folks don't have alternative um, coping skills, ways mm -hmm. to take better care of ourselves. Um, it is a challenge, but it is possible to get through things smoother when you have support and when you know other ways of taking care of yourselves and your right. families. In general, folks don't allow themselves for the full range of our emotions. We just like the good ones. We just like when we're happy, we're motivated, we're right. supported, feeling love. But there's also a whole nother um, experience that as a community, as a country, as uh, people on earth that we're now experiencing, which is fear. Um, there's also a lot of stress. So if you're a parent or a partner, not having a lot of answers about when I go back to work, um, how are we gonna pay the bills? Um, for myself, having family members who are older um, and right now having my partner's family is in the hospital in a nursing home. So those are the most at risk folks. And I know in general, you know, if you're close to your parents, you might be concerned about their well being too. Um, Right now, I just experience a lot of folks with um, fogginess and thought, mm -hmm. um, maybe moving a lot faster than they anticipated and clumsiness, or just feeling scattered, like I don't know where to start first. So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that people are juggling, which is like how to manage your household needs, um, but also like, how, do, how am I gonna get to work? Am I gonna take BART? Um, am I gonna drive in? you know, or is the building going to be closed? So there's a lot of questions that folks are having right now and not a lot of answers, to be honest. Kids require a lot of structure and guidance. They depend on their caregivers or their family members to for everything, like what can I eat? What, what can I wear? When can I do certain things? And so there's just not a lot of answers, but um, I think it's important to not shelter kids from your authentic emotions. So mm -hmm. feeling scared, feeling, um, you know, um, stress, but stress can look like, hold on a minute. Don't come in here right now. I don't mm -hmm. go sit down. You know, it could look very different than just saying the word stress. It, it could be, you're more irritable with the kids. So you can be irritated and frustrated and say, Hey, Hey kid. Hey son. Hey daughter. I'm frustrated right now, can you give me five minutes? Mm -hmm. And that way they understand it when they're experiencing it themselves that, oh, that's what that emotion is. 
oh, I'm really sad. Um, and allowing them to see the emotions of sadness. Because some people could be sad and still very functional and some people mm -hmm. need a time out. So when you allow yourself to express yourself, you're giving kids permission to also feel it as well. But also saying, I'm going to take care of you. I don't know when you'll go back to school, but we're going to do the best that we can do at home. Mm -hmm. And it's giving that reassurance to kids that things will be, you will do the best that you can to take care of them. Because the truth is, that's what you're probably doing anyways. But having that conversation with kids can be really reassuring. So my group practice um, is comprised of eight therapists. In general, we offer services for individuals and couples. We've now expanded our services for um, group sessions, specifically on um, stress relief. So we're going to have groups starting as early as next week for middle, skate, middle school age um, youth, for older teens, and for adults. Um, and I, I could send you the list of um, the specific groups, but we have some therapists Perfect. who are really um, trained on helping kids manage anxiety. Anxiety can look like acting out behavior. They're not listening. They're all over the place. And um, we can learn skills to help kids better regulate their emotions and also get a firm. It is scary right now. I don't mm -hmm. know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't have the answer. But I will do my best in making sure you're cared for. The same is true for adults, like the patients that we've are supposed to extend to children is gonna really be helpful in our adult lives as well with your partners, mm -hmm. with your coworkers, with your family members, that patience of saying, you know, I don't have the answers, but I've been thinking about you. Yes. Hey, I'm concerned about you. Is there anything I could help you with? Or even saying, I'm having a hard time. Can you help me with something specific? So the, the things that we teach children are still applicable to us as adults. Yes. Like those soft skills don't go away. So um, with the group starting, we want to make sure that folks are connected, are not feeling isolated. Um, I know with the different age ranges, um, sometimes parents are already having a hard time with their <laughs> growing teen. Um, so being, at, being able to have a virtual community where they could talk amongst themselves, but also learn um, coping skills. Um, for those who are fortunate to have really great support systems, you know, continue to utilize it. Therapy is not for everyone. It's not a requirement, but it's available to those who I've tried everything, but I'm still having a hard time. I try to talk to my family and they say, just pray about it or, you know, you'll get through it, tough it out. And if that's not helpful for you and it feels like you're really struggling, therapy can be a really great tool where you're seen and heard and supported as you go through your challenge or you know working towards a goal mm -hmm. so i know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there right now who are still um trying to grind it out there's a collective slowdown how do we help um, keep your mind on something positive as you continue to do the work to support yourself so um, having had experience working in the hospital, it is a very strong support amongst the nursing, amongst the doctors, but they also don't get permission to slow down because they don't have the privilege of like gathering themselves because they're so um, preoccupied and caring for others, which we're so grateful for. Yes. But I also yeah. want to create the space uh, because you are a human being. We are creating low cost, our pro bono services for medical providers or any frontline workers. It could be janitors, it can be your grocery store clerks. Um, that this amount of pressure that you're witnessing every day, you're touching folks, you're talking to folks. Um, I know the human only has a finite amount of energy. And so being able to have mental health support allows you to have more of a bandwidth to continue mm -hmm. doing this work. Um, and I know among all the other things, we just want to be able to provide services for the most um, at risk, which are our medical providers and our folks still helping us out with our day to day needs.
the same rule applies to everyday life is when you're feeling really overwhelmed is to get present and get present means literally look around your immediate environment feel yourself sitting on a chair look outside and see the the neighbors the color of their house look up and see if you see any birds can you hear the sound and what you're doing is gathering yourself to the present moment because all we have is right now and each time you're getting overwhelmed is you're doing it over and over. So moment by moment, you're taking care of ourselves. There's no longer this luxury thing of like, once a week I go, you know, I go climbing or once a week I go do this thing. No, it's actually every day. And it's a practice that we talk about in therapy is how do you take care of yourself when you're challenged? Because it's easy when it's going good. Right. Um, but if you're struggling, know that support is available. I, I'm aware that our immediate networks don't offer don't always offer us the support that you need as an individual. So there are therapists that are trained to see you and hear you for your unique needs. So just take it moment by moment, gather yourself and then hit it, whatever you need to do. But you're gonna find that we're gonna have to do that over and over and you'll get better at it. So let me know. Um, and there's, it's not just our organization. I know of other therapists who are also extending themselves specifically for the impact of what COVID-19 is doing uh, within our communities. Thanks for having me. I know this is a very uncertain time and I'm happy to discuss how we can support one another, but most importantly, take care of our mental health needs as we're going through this challenge.